Hey, 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 what's going on? We had to take it to Instagram, you know, um, had some technical difficulties going on and stuff right now. So, you know, um, we about to do it right now. You know what I'm saying? So just wait for my young boy, Primo, to come on in and we're going to talk to him. God, just waiting for my young boy, Primo, to come on in, send that, hit the thing so he can come on in, you know, spring him on in and stuff like that so we can get this started. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah, man, I don't know, man, you know what I'm saying? That joy is messing me up, man. I'm like, dang, I'm trying to get yeah. my interview with the young prince, man. <laughs> you know, what's going on with you, man? Good, I'm good. It's game day tomorrow. We just try to lock in. Just got out of film, so yeah, that's what's up, man. Um, yeah, man, it's an honor, man. Had you on the show, bro. You know what I'm saying? I definitely, you know what I'm saying, an honor, man. You know, so I mean, you know, this time out with Shaq, bro. So you know, take your time out, talk your ish, whatever you want to do, and, uh, and we're gonna dive into it. So we just gonna have a little Q and A. Um, the people that's watching this right now, if y'all got questions. You know what I'm saying? Y'all want to ask the, the young prince, man, just, you know, let them know and we'll get into it. So the first thing is, man, how, how you handling COVID and everything? Uh, good. Uh, we, we all vaccinated. Um, they had no as far as right now. Um, still compete here. Okay, okay, okay. That's what's up. That's what's up. You know, how how's the family doing? How pops, how moms, how, how, the, how the siblings doing? Yeah. I just landed out here in um, Virgin Islands. Uh, we play the, we play um, Northeastern tomorrow at okay. uh, five five forty five yard time. So they are, they just we 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 all safe and sound over here. Nah, man, that that's what's up, man. That's what's up, man. So yeah, man, we just going going dive into it, man. So let everybody know, man. When did you first, you know what I'm saying, fall in love with basketball? When when did you say, like, yo, I, man, I, I love this game, man. This game could take me places, man. When did you first fall in love with it? I probably, honestly, probably after I got injured, respectfully. Uh, when it was taken away from me uh, for, for a very long time, I was out for a year. I felt like that's when I realized I really, I really love the game. I mean, I, I, everybody know I was playing it since I was a youngin, but when I really fell in love with it, it was probably after I got injured and it, and it was taken away from me and I couldn't hoop. And I really realized that I really wanted to do this. Wow, yeah, that's 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 what's up, man. Like we gonna dive into that to that injury too, man, because that that was crazy, man. You know what I'm saying? And I mean, I tagged this the redemption season for you. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Cause you, you've been through it, man. Some of us athletes can never imagine that. You know, also, you know, I, I if I'm not mistaken, you played youth football. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? It's a bit. What, what was that like? You know what I'm saying? How, how was that growing up? Um, well, I started off with the Bloom for Raiders uh, when I was very young, like six, seven. And then I made that jump um, eighth grade to um, Hartford Hurricane. And that's I, I really thought I could be good. I'm playing at the highest level, Pop Warner. So, um, coach, coach, Phil and them really um, put that battery in my back and, and thought I could be, I could be good. When I got injured, um, mm -hmm. I mean, my pops and my mom, we had to talk. They didn't think it was, for me, I had just got everything taken away from me. They didn't even think I was gonna be able to hoop again. So they didn't think basketball was for me and, and um, should be played right now. But my senior year, I wanted to for me test it out again. I was back fully healthy, so. I tested it out and it worked out. I started getting some college looks, but for me, I had to go with what I what I love the most, and that was basketball. Nah, that's what's up, man. I mean, what is it like being a two sport athlete? You know what I'm saying? I mean, I was a two sport. Actually, I was a three sport athlete. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, people look at me. You know, I no, I, I played three sports. So, but what was it like growing up being a two sport athlete? Did did you feel like one sport helped you out with the other sport and vice versa? Most definitely. I think football definitely helped you out with basketball. Um, it, it gets more agility. You get quicker. You get faster. You get stronger. Lifting weights, football, and everything. But um, I definitely definitely think football. You lose your touch when you when you leave that leave basketball and play football. When I came back from playing senior year with football and then had to make that adjustment basketball my first couple games wasn't wasn't what I needed it to be but once you once you get your touch back you feel stronger you feel 
feel more quicker, faster. So. Okay, so let's let let's dive into the the AAU. How how was AAU basketball for you? You know what I'm saying. Um, growing up, what were some of the teams you you know played for? I mean, we obviously know the notable team that you was with, rocked out with most of your career. Yeah. And how how was the AAU experience for you? I mean, it was good. You get to play at the highest level. I mean, I was playing at UIBL, so. It was it was definitely you get to see um all the names that you that you see across your across your screen. So you get to test your ability, test your work ethic, test definitely get to experience a lot being on that level, but it's you just gotta go out and show out like you would anywhere else. It's definitely you gotta it definitely put the test to see how, how much you've been working on, on, on the summertime. But I, yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I, love, I love playing with y'all. I love playing with the teams from back home when I got to experience them. So it was fun all the way around till, till my AAU days was over, for sure. Yeah, man. I, I mean, speaking of playing with, with Hoot Wave, man, I mean, you played in uh, some memorable games with Hoot Wave, man, in the AAU, man. Let, let's talk about that memorable tournament, man. I mean, the team was, was, was loaded, man. You, young Takai. <laughs> Hey, I mean, Max, Dave, like man, what was that, man? Yeah, we was it was definitely stacked, and I feel like we should we should have came out with that with that with that W. If it wasn't as COVID, we had a little championship and stuff, but it was definitely fun. That was probably one of my last AAU tournaments um, ever, so it was it was definitely fun. Now that's what's up. So come high school you choose northwest you know, your, your, your first years or whatever you know and that's the same school as a former duquesne aaron jackson you know what i'm saying what went into that decision mm -hmm. to go to northwest versus you know some of the you know other schools that was talented and rich in tradition uh well for for Northwest, you know, Cairo had a had a big had a big influence on, on that decision. So that was my boy growing up a lot, and I seen what he was doing on on that level in the um, CIAC as a freshman. So he we talked, we had a, a couple talks, and he he thought that was my best yeah. interest here for the education and in the basketball part, being under Marabello and Marabello has some has some big time recruits, Karan Iverson, like you said, Eric Jackson. So. Um, I thought it was it was a it was a right decision, but after I got hurt, um, me and my dad revisited the conversation, and we thought, why not play with Smitty? Okay, yeah. So now this is where we're gonna, <clears throat> you know, dwell in to your sophomore season. I mean, that dreaded day. I actually finally, you know, saw when I was doing my research, saw the footage on your injury. You was actually going up, blocking a shot, and came mm -hmm. down. That was who I mean. That was an imaginable injury. How how did you feel when it happened, and what pushed you to have a major comeback? Oh, definitely my pops, my family. Um, then then they was with me throughout the throughout the whole journey when they was telling me I I wouldn't be able to hoop again and all the crying, all the all the stuff like that. So definitely my pops, my mom. And just my family just being there for me, just making sure I was good. We got a couple of heartbreaking news. I thought I was going to be back for my sophomore season a couple of days right before um, the GHBA tournament. They told me I wasn't I was going to be out for the season. So just staying in the gym, just being able to push myself. My dad pushing me in the gym every day, and, and it led to me having that breakout junior year and um, being a conference champion. Okay, so. Like you said, you know what I mean? You, what, what, so basically Windsor was that school of when it came time to, you know, transfer and stuff like that. Was was that the main choice or did you have some other schools in mind that you wanted to go to, you know, say that if it wasn't going to be what it was going to be at Northwest? What, what was the ultimate, ultimate decision in transferring to Windsor? Oh well, when it when it came down to it, I was I was in the Windsor school and 
as, as a middle schooler already. So um, I wanted I wanted to go off rip. So for me, my dad thought education wise, being in a Catholic school, being, uh, being around some diversity stuff like that was was a was a major point. Um, so he he pushed me to that Northwest and Cairo being over there kind of adjusted. So but Windsor Windsor was my my first choice, but Sacred Heart was an option. Um, it was a, it was a couple more options to go prep. But I thought, why not stay home and, and play for the city and then be under Coach Smith, which, which is a legendary coach in the CIAC? Uh, definitely, definitely. So, you know, at first, you know, the offers, they wasn't piling up like was coming in. So you decided to take it to the gridiron. You was basically determined, like, listen, I'm getting a scholarship somehow, whether it's football, basketball, or something, body's going to offer me something to take me to the next level. You know, how how was that, you know, playing football? Because yeah, obviously, you know, New Haven Register, all state, defensive back. Like, you know, how, how was that, you know what I'm saying? Not being up there, you seeing all these other guys getting offers, but you not getting offered. Do you feel that you didn't get them offers because of that injury? You know what I'm saying? Do you feel if you never got that injury, you was definitely having those offers? Yeah, most definitely. I mean, coming back from coming back from that injury, I didn't have the UIBL experience that I wanted to because I wasn't I wasn't fresh. I was I wasn't in the gym as much because I was coming off that injury. So sophomore year that that EYBL session I, I struggled because I hadn't been I hadn't been missing basketball for about three hundred and sixty five days. So it was it was stressful coming back from, from that injury and be able to adjust. But once I got my, my, my feet under me it was it was it was a cakewalk being in the CIAC and just, just showing my But football 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 I just feel like it was more of a of a for fun thing. I had took in four years off of football from eighth grade to my senior year. It was more of a fun thing. I mean, my dad, I was sneaking the sneaking the passing league games. My dad didn't even know just so I could play. So Fleet Fleet saw something in me that I, I could play at a high level and coaches started calling. My film started started getting better and it just it just kinda just flowed. Yeah, yeah, nah, definitely, man. I mean man, you know, I didn't see much of you, you know, saying as as a youngin, you know, playing football, whatever, I heard a lot about you, but to actually see you play, you know, at wins and stuff like that, man, you was dynamic, man. Only a few people, you know, played this game both ways, you know what I'm saying, and stuff like that at a high level. So coming back, you know, to basketball and stuff your junior year, was there any teams out there that you was like, yo, I'm gunning for and, and, and was determined to – you know, let them know that you was back and, and stuff like that? Uh definitely definitely the definitely the team that we played in the in the in the conference all the way to Mohegan. I felt like um us not being the first seed and, and losing a couple games to some state teams down the stretch, they kinda our record was, was kinda below than what we wanted it to be. So uh definitely East Catholic. I feel like that that forty point game was definitely I was gunning for. I was locked a week, and I feel like it showed. Um, I definitely wanted to see Sacred Heart in, in in that in the pathways to the Mohegan, but we didn't get to see them. So I mean, it was a couple teams we we was eyeing for, but we was just trying to take it game by by game. Nah, definitely, that's what's up, man. Um, East Catholic CCC chip forty one points. That year, you averaged twenty eight nine all state. Like you was on some some AI ish right there, man. Like you was putting up numbers, man. And to put up forty one against East Catholic, like not a lot of people put up big numbers like that against East Catholic. Like what was going through your mind, you know, mm -hmm. as you were, you know, balling against them, putting up those numbers. Mm -hmm. I mean, going in, going into my junior year, I didn't have any offers. I had probably St. John's, which I had got freshman year. And then I had U Heart going into my junior year, so it was it was more so trying to beat myself, trying to earn what I, what I what I what I know I deserve. But because God put me in a situation where I was coming back for an injury, I just had to show the city that 
city that I was I was I was the best scorer and the best player in in the city at that point. So I had to just 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 show my talents and and then when the offers started coming, Providence started started reaching out. I had to just show show the city that I was worthy. To be honest, nah, definitely. <laughs> Ooh, boy, you definitely put a show on, man. The Prince was really becoming a king that night, man. It, yeah. it, it was definitely, you know what I'm saying, crazy. Now, Windsor High School, Coach Smith, he said that you was one of the best guards he ever coached and the smartest. What do you take from that? It's an honor. He's had some, had some big names at that school. Jared was a frame. Some 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 big some big guys from the city that that put on, but I just feel like our our group helped a lot. We had some good guys on that group. We had Corey, we had we had Jordan, we had Lawrence, we had that big boy Lawrence, we had Alex. We just had a good group, and, and nobody was selfish. Nobody was 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 on that type of time where we we just wanted to win. Everybody wanted to win, and I feel like Coach, Coach Smith he, he's getting on his older days. So me and Corey had to had to really be coaches on the floor and really show him that our IQ level was, was good enough to run that team. <clears throat> nah, definitely. You guys definitely had a definitely talented team and stuff like that. I mean, from running down the court backwards, throwing alley-oops, I mean, we ain't never seen that. I mean, Bloomfield, <laughs> whoop. I don't mean to toot the horn of who it was, but, you know, that was crazy. That was viral. Like, mm. we ain't never seen that. But, nah, that, that's what it was, man. So, senior year over with, you know, no offers really still coming. So Mount Zion, how did that come along? Um, to be honest, I was I was committed to St. Thomas More. Uh, okay. Going into my prep year, um, I actually when I was down at to play the tournament with y'all, my okay. dad that Friday night and said Mount Zion was interested, but I was already, I had already put on social media that I was locked in with St. Thomas More, but um, it was an all black coaching staff, uh, Coach Rye Harrison and Coach and Coach B really uh, on my visit um, shocked me, <laughs> told me that they was going to push me, kind of, it kind of gave me that, that Coach Smith feel, knew they was going to push me, not tell me what I wanted to hear, and make sure I got to the next level, and that's what they did mm -hmm. uh, at Duquesne. Yeah, man. I mean, 21, 7, and 4, same school as New York Nick, Obi Toppin. Like, you know, like, man, you've been successful. So, we're going to get into the next thing. The name, Amir Primo Spears Jr. What was it like growing up with a legendary Pops who mm -hmm. played Division One ball? Auburn played at the highest level. Like, did you take bits and pieces from his game did you watch any tapes of him coming up like what was that what was that like you know what i'm saying having you know a father like that that can really show you the game and stuff well growing, growing up my pops was still active my pops was still playing he was still in his prime still playing in waverly mm -hmm. remember pro am still being in those leagues so i got to sit on the bench and watch him play with ooze rest in peace and, and AJ Price and, and them on the on the pro am team, so um, I got to take bits and pieces and actually be live instead of watching film. And then my dad very active. We played one on one. We got after it behind closed doors. So I, I took more probably more than bits and pieces of his game, and he got to got to show me show me kind of hands on how to how to get to the next level. So nah, that's that that's what's up, man. You know what I'm saying? That's definitely what's up, man, to have somebody of that stature, man, that really, you know, really drove you, really pushed you. I seen it from my own self. Every time I turn around, hey, y'all two in the gym, y'all working, you know, stuff like that. So name some of the toughest players that you played against in the CCC and AAU basketball. Um, definitely Matt Nolan. Um, Matt Nolan is probably a tough one. Um, CCC was a long time ago. Um, Matt Nolan. Um, let me think. I played against uh, Raheem from some Shaker Heart. My 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 soft my freshman year at Northwest. Um, Jalen Hunter is tough. Joey Riley. I'm East Catholic. I got a lot of legendary names on that roster. So yeah. Um, yeah, mostly, mostly those.
those names. Uh, I feel like I feel like Windsor. We kind of we kind of ran through everybody till it was time to get to the to the to the CCC and to the CCC playoffs. So when we, once we got there, we saw a lot of a lot of good names like that. Um, who else? We played against some the tough tough guards um, that we played to get into the game to to go to Mohegan. Um, so yeah, names like that definitely tough. That's what's up. So, who would you say is the toughest school you played against? School. I would definitely have to say um, the team we played from Jersey in Hoop Hall Classic. I forgot their name. Okay. And from played them in Hoop Hall Classic, we that was a, a tough battle. But if if we talking about in the city, probably definitely East Catholic. They had a they had a good a, a good well coach. <laughs> Good three three headed monster with um Joey Riley, Matt Nolan, and Jalen Hunter. So that was definitely probably the toughest matchup we 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 had in, in my high school career. Okay. Besides your pops, who were some of your other idols you looked up to growing up? Um, I'm definitely going to have to say Dougie. Dougie's a Dougie's definitely a big one. Uh, he yeah. Dougie probably changed changed my life to be honest. I was going in come after coming out with no no offers going into my prep year uh Dougie probably put a, a lot of battery in my back being on the being on the Vertimax I wasn't dunking when I came out of high school he he got me playing over the rim I might have to say Dougie I might have to say uh Shav Shav Hardy he he was in for me a lot um going through that going through that time where I was I was struggling to um be a D1 basketball player <clears throat> Like that, just people in my circle, really. Now, what was it like, you know, playing in the Hoot Wave Showcase, which, you know, all the top players came out, showed up, showed out. What was it like being on that stage against all that top talent in, in, in Connecticut? What, what was that like for you? It was beautiful to see. I know a lot of people in the city go to other places and play and, and don't stay stay in the stay in the city so definitely bringing the city together it, it's, it's amazing to see i def i love the first one the one that was at the ymca was probably my favorite one. Oh, oh yeah 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 I, that, whoo, boy. I, 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 that one boy and the atmosphere in that one was probably the best one but i like the one that classical the one that classical was fire and and the one the one now i didn't get to see it i wanted to come home so bad to see the one from this year but i, I heard the atmosphere was great I just like I just like keeping that. Everybody think we got to go to New York to play. I just want to stay in the city and just show city love and know we got some killers right here in Connecticut. So, okay. So, what lessons? As far as playing ball, that you learned from your injury and taking that forward um, with playing ball. That's definitely discipline, discipline, uh, work ethic. Just, be, just being in the gym, staying, staying, keeping your composure through through bumpy, bumpy roads and, and stuff like that. So, discipline is definitely one because you gotta learn how to just, just stay the course, keep pushing, um, just control the controllable stuff you can't control, minutes, stuff like that at a high level. Just, just earn, earn, earn your stuff. Everybody got to earn their stuff and, and just earn your minutes. And I learned that, it's definitely coming to college. Um, your name, all the stuff you did in the past, it doesn't matter. You got to show up when, it, when it's time. So uh, your work ethic, staying in the gym, being, staying polished up, making sure you, you keep me a spot. Uh, definitely, definitely. A um, few more things. Um, who's your top three coaches? Coaches. Ooh. I'm gonna have to go with Big Dean. I'm gonna go with Smitty, and I gotta go with my pops. That's what's up. That's who. That's a three for you. Hell, right there. Yeah. Ooh, man. I mean, whoo, man. Yeah, that that that's a good big three. All right, a couple more things. Uh, your favorite NBA player and why? One more time, I couldn't hear you. Your favorite NBA player and why? Uh, I'm definitely, I'm definitely a, a LeBron, a LeBron fan. 
Um, I, I just like his 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 motivation, uh, his mental toughness. He, he'll never let nothing bother him. Everything is to the next play. But the person I'll probably watch the most and, and relate my game after is Kyrie Irving. Uh, he I like I like his pick and roll, his pick and roll stuff. The way he could beat his man off the dribble, his mid range. So that's definitely the person I highlight my game over. But LeBron is definitely my favorite player. Just to, just the mental aspect of it. Got you. So what's 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 some of your goals that you want to accomplish? You know, for this season. Uh, I definitely want to take my team to A10 tournament. I want to uh -huh. win. I know I ain't gonna get anything personal if we if we don't if we don't get far. But I definitely want defensive player, A10 defensive player of the year, and A10 um, freshman of the year. Got you, and I definitely want to congratulate you on that A10. You know, what I'm saying rookie of the week and stuff like that, man. You know, so those are your goals for the season. What is your ultimate goal? Uh, definitely, I, I definitely want to go to the league. I want to play at the highest level. And I feel like it's definitely doable. Um, I feel like I'm in a great a great conference in the eight ten. Uh, I feel like eight eight or nine people from from this conference have have made it to the league this past draft. So just keep keep putting up numbers and keep winning, and I feel like everything will fall into place. Nah, man, hey man, I feel it's on fall into place too, man. Like I said, man, this is the redemption season. You know what I'm saying for you. You know, like I said, I've seen you come up in the basketball realms from a young to where you at now, and it's been an honor, you know, for you know watching you and being on the sideline, coaching you a little bit, stuff like that. You know, what I'm saying, always listening to things I say and stuff like that, man. It's a real honor, man, and I wish you nothing but the best success. You Appreciate know. So, you know, moms and pops, you know what I'm saying, for always holding you down, you know what I'm saying, and everything. And uh, we're going to leave off with this. I do this with everybody that come on, whether coach or player. Give me five players to make the ultimate primo. They can be an NBA player. They could be your high school teammate. They could be college. Give me five players and one thing that you take it from them to make the ultimate primo spins. Five players. They could be from anywhere. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go. Chris Paul. Okay. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go. Corey McKeithen. Okay. Now, when you name them, you gotta name what you take it from them. Okay. I'm definitely gonna go. Chris Paul. The in the the the. The pick and roll, uh, the passing, uh, the IQ. Um, I'm gonna go Corey. I'm gonna go defense where he, he sits down. Okay. Um. Mm, that's a tough one. Got three more. Three more. I'm gonna go Davion. Okay. The way he, he's a he's a two way player. He defends and, and still and still get people buckets on on the other end. Yep. 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 What up, Pillow? How you doing? Yes, sir. Yep. Who else? That's 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 four, three. You got two more. I'm gonna go Kyrie. Okay. Mary, break people, break people down one on one. And my last one. Last one. I'm gonna go Jay Sean Williams. Okay. Wow. Okay. Okay. I see him. I see him and me when I was young. When I was about his age, I like I like his ethic, the way he the way he gets after people, the way his toughness, his grittiness. Yeah, I like yeah. remind me a lot of myself when I was around that age. So that's that's the five I'm gonna go with. Okay, that's that. Uh, hey, hey, you can't go wrong with that five right there, man. You know what I'm saying? So, in in parting words. What words and of wisdom can you give to the young guys that's yeah. coming up, that has looked up to you, and that has followed you all through social media, through the hoop waves, through the Windsors, through everywhere? What important words and advice that you can give to them? Uh, just control the controllable. You can't control the rankings. You can't control what, what offers you get, who's coming to look at you. All you can do is control your work ethic, your discipline, and and, and just just staying in the gym. Every everybody that stays in the gym, it works out. The basketball guys is real. 
They see who's working. They see who's not working. So just control the controllable. And, and my, my, my number one thing is in the recruitment is love who love you. Don't, don't show nobody love who, who don't love you. I feel like I had a, a lot of high majors after Mount Zion with the Kansas and the Maryland, and I feel like I picked the right school. They 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 show me love. They give me the minutes I want, the shots I want, everything else. So don't don't go nowhere too high because of the name. Go right where you fit in, right where they where they love you at. Man, that's what's up, man. Like I said, hey, well, I want to thank everybody that came on this show, this episode, time out with Shaq. You know what I'm saying, and and joining me. You know what I'm saying? Young Primo, a.k.a. the Prince, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, hey, y'all need to check this boy out, man. Duquesne, man. This this, this boy going to be a name to be mentioned all four years he there. You know, I don't know. He may <laughs> last year go to that league. I don't know. May put his name in the hat. I don't know. We going to see. But once again, man, like I said, man, it's been an honor, man. A blessing. You know what I'm saying on the show, man. And hey, man, hopefully you come back on the show, man, and talk about your experience in the NCAA tournament and everything, man. Most definitely. Appreciate you, huh? Yes, sir. Love you, nephew. Later. Bye.